as good a place to start as any. It's on Lydney Harbour and it's a memorial to the people that were killed when two barges struck each other and then demolished the rail bridge 17 minutes after a passenger train had passed over apparently. Now the plaque here is facing upriver but should be facing downriver because uh, there's the canal and the swing bridge and then right over this side you can see the stone arches and that's where we're going to make a start seeing if we can find anything left of those. The wrecks of the barges are still there and can still be seen. I don't let's get too far ahead of ourselves. Let's go hunting for the stone pillars. First we have to find somewhere to park. Well, maybe not the best place to park up. It's the trailhead, that's the trail. Should be enough clearance there I would think. Okay, let's hit the trail. Squeeze through job. Off we go. This will have been station access at one point. Stone wall here off to the side. As befits the station entrance. And one of them up there. There was tarmac at the start, but now it's mainly a cobbled surface, as befits this age. I dare say the tarmac was a later addition. An accommodation crossing. Stretches over the old road here. Well, that old thing's done some service, isn't it? Cracking me. I'm not sure if that's an old railway soldier in there or not. It looks in rather good condition. I don't see any holes for the chair. A moderate addition, you'd have to think. Nice view here of Purton and the river. I'm guessing this line of trees leads, uh, leads us to the railway, which leads us to the Severn. Well, we're still on the approach road, but here's something of significance coming up here. Still watching this line of trees. A nice view of the Severn through the archway. We'll take a better look. Fair picture. A beefed up fence post there, crikey. Well, our railway then is up there. If we pan round here to the left, we go for the field, the embankment along there. The field rises to meet it, so it's not going to be all on an embankment. All we've got to do is get up there to take a look. Okay. This doesn't look very inviting from here. That's looking over the bridge. And I'm not sure whether this wall is part of the uh, bed of the bridge, or is a modern addition meant to be an obstruction. Works well for both, I think. Looking the other way, it doesn't get any better. Having fought my way down off the embankment, wouldn't any easier coming down than it was trying to get up. The embankment up there, and I think this is probably pedestrian station access, I hope so. Is it any better? Some rotten old fencing in the hedge here. Could be anything. But I think that gnarly old thing there is a sleeper fence post. Sign that the track was, well, cobbled. And now we're off up there. Track bed at last. With an railway like structure. I think that has agricultural leanings rather than railway. That route there with the farm piece of machinery is looking towards the bridge that we've just come from. It looks passable from here, doesn't it? Can't make that mistake again. Well, this is the structure which looks like a pheasant feeding post to me. 
on wheels. My gosh, those wheels look old. First World War stuff almost, I would think. So just looks like it's got a pneumatic tyre. Hmm. Interesting chassis, that could tell a tale or two, I imagine. You have to think that this area here then, where this thing is parked, it's got to be the station site. And we've just come at the top of the slope on the left there. You wouldn't want people walking alongside the railway. So the station then must be here. Well, this is all there is to see. Bit of plain fencing in there. You can imagine the old express roaring up here. And just cross the river. We're in a cutting at the moment. Quite steep. So we've come from a large embankment to a large cutting. Always balanced out nicely. We have to go up here to see what else there is to see. Remains of some ballast. I thought we might see indentations from sleepers, but not yet. Some gorgeous ferns on the bank here. Lovely. Starting to look a bit slushy here. It's a problem with the cutting, isn't it, once the drainage has been blocked up? It comes like a reservoir. Crikey, this is a bit unstable. Some huge blocks down here. It's a mess. You wouldn't want that on your toe or your railway. Well, this doesn't look very inviting. Too bad. Next. If you look carefully here, the ground is rising all the time. Which I suppose if you've been down to practically river level, that's what it's going to do. Another farm access crossing here. Perhaps a service road as well. With the other gate just to there. An accommodation crossing. Okay, move on to the main attraction, just up there. Look at that beautiful structure and the little dot that's out the other side. Noisy blessed aeroplanes again. This is wide enough for twin track, which I think it was, but only single track across the river. Nice keystone at the top of the arch, keeping the whole thing together. Wow. Look at the workmanship here. Tapering buttress. I suppose an ordinary shape one would have been alright, but no, their aesthetics wanted it that way. Look at the stonework. Brick lined at the top, and I fancy I can see some blacking, blackening from locomotive smoke. Mind you, I am a bit of an old romantic, that's for sure. There's the other end, a thousand yards away. Let's see if the old camera will cope. The beautiful old buttress on that side. Then look at that stonework. It's a work of art, isn't it, when you use blocks of different sizes? And you won't find any overlapping joints, I don't suppose. 
And what about these huge blocks on the end? How do you lift those into place? Gosh, I got away over a ton, haven't they? Look at the end detail. I'm not quite sure what you call that. A huge, wonderful, wonderful workmanship. That's out here in the middle of nowhere. No one's ever going to come and look at it. Well, except us. A couple of holes here. I wonder if it's held the cables. That might be the foundation stones there. I wouldn't think so. Ah, feels special walking in here. Looks all this history. Craftsmanship, workmanship. What a privilege. A refuge you'd have bolt into for trains coming. At the base of the refuge, look, you can see the foundation stone. Bit of an unusual sight. Grand. Well, the trip's been a success already without anything else. I'm kind of uh, reluctant to leave this. It's so wonderfully constructed. It's sharing history. People's lives who lived on this railway line. Grand. Well, I can't say I've ever seen that before. A little ways in from the entrance, and the blocks aren't decorative, they're rough hewn. Wow, oh, saved a bit of money, a bit of time. The stonemasons hacked them out, and the builders plonked them down. I imagine that there's some of the original cement in there, probably lime cement. An original mortar will be in there. Amazing. 200 years. And the line there then carried on to Lydney, at the other end of the tunnel. I don't think there's anything really worth the effort of going up there. A poor old thing like me. We'll trudge back the way we came. See what else we can find. Now somewhere here, just on the entrance of the tunnel, has to be some signalling gear, doesn't there? What are these pair of tall posts here doing? That one's got some metal work on it. Don't know what. The post itself is a piece of Mr. Brunel's broad gauge rail. And surprisingly, and just up here, on the edge of the tunnel, they flattened out a space for a sign of some sort. They weren't prepared to just hammer it onto the bricks. They scooped out a place to put it. There are a few holes in the uh, blocks here for various. Well, looked into leave, and I'm going to have to do it. Can't spend all day here. Back the way we came. Off to the one side there's this sort of culvert here. It looks like it's actually fallen apart to be honest. A bit steep for me to get down there but I suspect that the fore end of the culvert has collapsed. A right jumble of fallen masonry and uh, woodwork. Looking back again and off to the side the trees are where the tunnel is, and you can see why they needed it. Huge great bank. Sloping down and off to the river. I think that gives a better impression of the slope. Tunnel through the trees. You can just make out a promontory on the horizon there, sticking out into the river. That's Lydney Harbour. With a noisy airplane. Look how dangerous this river is. Those currents tripping over sandbanks, I guess. 
signs of sharpness don't work in the distance. And then on the other side of the river, over there, my next objective, which is the other end of the rail bridge. And then somewhere in this river are the twin wrecks of the tankers that knocked it down. Under there, it's a low water job. Ah, oh, a little bit of sunshine. Right up our day. We're just looking over the other side of the uh, river. That huge great wind turbine, which is based at Sharpness Docks. In there. The dock itself is down there. And you've got various bits and pieces, the old custom house moorings up there. That line of trees there then is our railway heading towards the Severn. First it has to cross the main line down there someplace. I'm guessing about there. He's motoring. I'll get to the front of him. Out of it. There's a man in an orange suit wandering around down here. I'm not quite sure what he's up to. He looks like something from Network Rail. He's a fair way from the rail, but hmm. I suppose he's going to take too kindly to us wandering about. Keep going. There's more of them. Well, we're back to our original accommodation bridge. Now we want to go that way and see whether we can get the embankment or not. Network rail on the prowl. They're not looking for me. There's a kind of track down there, but I think it could be an animal track. I'll give it a shot. Well, that was quickly a no-go. There's only one way we're going to pass or cross the main line anyway, which is the official crossing. So we might just well get down there and get on with it. I'll go alongside these trees in case there's any access or points of interest. Let's go on the move. fast all of a sudden. The embankment we were following then, I was obviously shoved up there to cover the jump the railway as well, was absolutely ginormous. How do they get down to river level from there? I'm not quite sure. Except it's not river level, is it? Well, I was hoping this was going to lead to a nice track. I don't know where this is going. I'm just assuming it takes me somewhere. I'm in Sharon Idle territory here. I ought to be collecting nettles, I think. Is that pretty? Not from where I'm standing. Could be from where you are. The path is making a left curve. We should get us to the railway. Assume it didn't snap back. Look at that big old thing. Right. The forest giant. I'm in hairy golfer territory here. I should be laying a breadcrumb trail, I reckon. We found some piles of masonry. One of the piers going inland, I guess. Looking to see if I can see any tool marks on it. I don't think it can be a natural outcrop. Another huge jumble of rocks, it looks like. This is probably the supporting piers, I would think. That's all that's left.
There are tool marks and squared off edges on that top block. And pecking marks. So this is the structure then. Another huge stone pile coming up. So they didn't build an embankment on this side then, between the river and the other side of the main line. They built piers. Thanks to all the jumble and the huge blocks. I wonder if they blew it up or whether they just pulled it down. Centre screen, that's the price for me. Look at the rounded edge. That's one of the outer blocks. Having fought our way through that lot, reached the river's edge. There's a huge drop off here. But down there you can just about make out the stones. Evidence of more stone for the building. And then the uh, bridge went off over there. Then just to there is a huge pier, still intact but fallen over. That's the money shot, I reckon. Absolutely wonderful. Why wasn't it left as a tribute to the people that built it? And those that lost their life in the accident. And down the bottom, a huge pile of blocks covered in slime, estuary silt. Not much of a tribute to the guys that built all this, is it really? I actually made it to the side of this. This must have been the practice one because it didn't fall apart. It just fell over. Huge. Amazing. Complete with original mortar. Absolutely ginormous. And out there, the River Severn and the Crossing. Locks everywhere you look. A fierce old river out there as well. And looking back, there's the fallen giant. There's some metal work there, look. That was embedded in the stone. Several bits, in fact. Just when you don't want a noisy aeroplane. Anybody, is that part of the span? Part of the metalwork? Well, when those bolts were being tightened up, this is all a brand new adventure. And this is how it ends. So, this is where it launched off then to go across the river. Over there. The other side, as it were. Certainly a rugged spot, isn't it, to launch a bridge from. It's a job to know what's original here and what's part of the bridge. Well, I suspect most of it's part of the bridge, to be honest. OK, time to go. Up there now, then. Well, we got down. And on the way back, a massive culvert. Well, the culvert's not big, but the uh, stonework is. Built in the Severn Bridge style. Great big blocks. I think this was the way in. Doesn't look very familiar, but <laughs> we'll get there. Ah, well, I recognise that. They've got the hang of felling these things by the time they got here. I don't know what this is going to look like on screen. But on here, there's just a faint track. And hopefully it goes the right way. We'll find all that out in due course. Well, as they say, I'm going to pack up my tent on this side. This is Lydney. And then I'm going to go to Sharpness to see if we can find the wrecks of the two tankers. I will first check the, uh, the tides. We need a good low tide to see the tankers at their best, I think. So I will go over there. I think I'm going to make this, uh, the end of this film, 
and then we'll make the uh, shark nesting the next film, part two if you like. So if you've enjoyed this half, join me in the next one. That'll be the second half. See you there.